Okay, right, so what have we done so far? This is video form. What have we done so far? We have looked at the traditional scenario of trying to see how we decide or make the decision to on which product to make, looking at using contribution. But then we have taken that a step further to moving into modern manufacturing, where labor is considered a fixed cost. So typically supervisory, quality inspections, things like that, um, that we are in an automated system. So the only variable cost being material. And we have worked out um, throughput. I mean, even the, the meaning of the word throughput, what's coming through, if you like, after dealing with material, if you like. <clears throat> so um, this last video, what we're going to do is we're going to play around with a few things and just sort of see how this information becomes useful. So there's this idea of something called the throughput accounting ratio. And it's a formula that you have to understand, you have to remember. It's given to you. I think you don't have to know. I think it's better you know it. It's given to you in the exam, um, in the um, formula sheet. But it's actually quite straightforward. It, it is the return per factory hour divided by the cost per factory hour. And we'll talk about why, you know, it's even a useful formula. So this return per factory hour, you know, is really, we've, we've worked this out already. So this could be, this is per product. So per product X, we could find what the return per factory hour was. We, we, that's that's kind of like finding out what the throughput um, really is per factory hour, isn't it? And for product, if you remember for product, um, for product X, it was 8.5. And for product Y, it was 8, right? Um, what we're going to look at, I guess, right now is how we work out what the cost is per factory hour. And when we talk about cost here, we're talking about all the fixed costs. And when we talk about fixed costs, we're talking about labor and all the other fixed costs. I'll say that again. When we talk about costs here, we're talking about labor and all the other fixed costs. Here, we were looking at, we subtracted material cost, didn't we, from sales revenue to find out what the throughput. You could almost call this throughput per factory hour, if you like. And then we'll discuss the, the point to the ratio. Anyway, let's, you can probably start thinking it through anyway. Return per factory hour divided by cost per factory hour. Is it worth making the product? We definitely want a positive figure greater than one, right? Um, in a way, you could, you could almost lean this towards break even. You know, is it, are we breaking even? You don't want to be making a product where the return per factory hour is less than the cost per factory hour. So a range of ways, a range of angles to sort of look at whether or not um, this product is worth it, at least to even signal to see if there's a problem, if you like, um, in making the product. Okay, right. So let's push. Uh, again, I said the total factory cost is the fixed production cost, including labor. Um, I, I highlight again, this excludes materials. Now, again, the factory in this scenario here, they, in the exam, you're typically given the total factory cost. So we'll see a few examples, maybe where you're not, and we'll have to add up all the factory costs if they've been given to us individually, and divide by the total available hours. And the total available hours in this scenario that we've just been working on is 48,000. So I've just put this example of 360,000. And so, therefore, um, the, 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 in this scenario, the cost per factory hour is 360,000 divided by 48,000, 7.5. And if you like, this is the cost of running the factory, right? Isn't it? The, this is the, you know, the cost that must be covered. If you like, the overhead cost of running this factory for every hour. Right. Um, next slide. So what we then do is we say, okay, what's the throughput per, per hour, the return per factory hour? We have 8.5, we have 8. We have the factory cost per hour to 7.5 already, and we can compare. And we can can, can see here that the um, throughput um, accounting ratio here is 1.13 and 1.066. So I mean, I guess with ratios, what are we really saying? For every hour of factory, for every factory hour invested in product X, you get 1.13. For every hour invested in product Y, you get 1.066. So you obviously get more for product Y. I mean, this doesn't mean, I mean, we, we sort of knew this anyway from here. I mean, this the, the numerators are the same. So I don't think TPAR in itself starts telling us which to make. We, we found that out when we found the throughput for factory hour and we could rank them. But again, this just tells us more um, whether or not we should be making the product 
at all. I mean, it's very possible that these could have been less than 7.5, both of them. And we could still rank them. But then overall, it'd be costing us much more to, to, to make them if they were both less than 7.5 and the factory cost was 7.5. So um, I think it's more about whether or not, um, again, I'll just sort of expand and read what I'm, what I'm saying here. The point of the calculation, um, we aim to make more profit than the cost of the product. And this technically allows us to see if we're breaking even. Technically. Again, like I'm saying, we want a, you know, a DPA um, throughput accounting ratio that's greater than one. Um, and generally, again, um, it allows us to sort of see what's causing this, um, what's stopping it from being greater than one, how can we improve it. And generally, I guess you always want to reduce your costs and you want to increase your revenue. So you can see that you can get objective questions that sort of um, ask you how can you improve the TPAR. And you're really saying, well, you're looking at your numerator and your denominator, and the math of it is drop your numerator as low as you can, increase your um, numerator, drop your denominator, forgive me, as low as you can, and increase your numerator as much as you can. You're just looking for tools. Um, again, generally, what are we really arguing? We're just really saying that um, throughput accounting, and like the other sort of earlier videos, we're highlighting that make the best use of the resources you have in the short term. And that sort of in this scenario where we've been dealing with labor hours, we call that the bottleneck. That's what's causing us a bit of a delay. So let's make as much as we can in the meantime. But in the in the, in the in the long term, we need to get rid of that bottleneck. We need more hours, or we need to fix the machine. Whatever it is that's causing that that bottleneck. Um, again, nothing new. Priority should be given to products that are, have a greater um, ratio than one. And when when it's less than one. It probably is resulting in a loss, you know, through it is insufficient to cover the operating operating costs. Again, this is very much a short term thing, if you like. Again, and so in the long term, we will have all our resources available to us, so we would move away from that, um, the idea of throughput, um, because then we want to make as much profit as we can, and the returns are different. Again, like I say, most businesses don't just operate in the short term. Um, in the long term, all costs are variable, because if we need more, we can, um, you know, we can gain more. We can gain more um, if we need more um, rental space. We're not in the long term. We just get more. So when I say long term, we're talking about two, three years. So the first year you need more. We, we get more in the second year. So over a long period of time, all costs are variable. So um, TPAR, well, what happens then? Because the whole idea is to um, only recognize materials as variable. But in the long term, um, all costs are variable. So the key point is we can't, but this, this, this idea of what, this, what I'm talking about here, TPAR, all these things aren't built for long term decision making. They're built for short term decision making. Right, exactly. So sometimes a product might be giving you a low TPAR, but in the long term, um, the, those if it's giving you a TPAR less than one, it means that somehow the operating costs have been considered fixed. But this might not be the case. This will not be the case in the long term. These costs will become variable. Those costs will not exist. So if those costs do not exist as fixed costs in the long term, the denominator will be smaller anyway. So um, by by default, TPAR. Um, you should be careful when you're using it. It's only very much a short-term um, scenario. Okay, great. So what I've got here is um, an example for you to sort of um, play with. Well, well, I mean, we've already done an example through the video, so I'm not going. To, I'm just going to leave it for you to work through. It's on the um, PowerPoint to play with, and we'll look at it um, in class. Um, but um, I'm just going to jump to look at improving. At the end of this, I have another example for you to look at, to work on. But I, this is an example. Improving the TPAR, increase your sales price if you can. Again, of course, reduce your material costs. You know the limitations of trying to do either of those and trying to reduce your op total operating expenses. But the key point here, you can see that all of this very much works within this just-in-time environment that we've been talking about and trying to make, um, trying to be as lean as, as possible. 
Right, yes, and exactly. So we can we can have a range of products that we need to decide um, which to make first. And the aim, of course, is to maximize that that profit. Um, again, find out what's causing the problem. It says identify the bottleneck constraint that could be hours. Calculate the throughput. Throughput per bottleneck, so throughput per hour. If it was um um if it was hours that were was the issue, rank them and allocate the resources, and therefore answer the question. So I have some class exercises for you to look at. Um, so please um play with these um you know between now and um when next I see you, and we'll discuss them um, in class. I have the answers there as well for you to practice. But please go through go through that um when you when you're free. Okay, right, great stuff. That, that that's just gone over ten minutes. Um, so that's the end of our videos on throughput accounting. Again, we will look at this through questions in class, but please go through the videos. It gives you a head start. Thank you. See you in the next video.